You know what I was thinking about today? Could you punch somebody in the back hard enough to paralyze them? 100%. Probably in the neck, no? Like, no, just, like, you know, because obviously, not obviously, but if you get shot in the back, like, it could paralyze you? Like, what if someone really punch you really hard? You can, for sure. I would think so. No, 100%. There's dudes in the NFL that hit other guys so hard that they broke their vertebrae and they paralyzed themselves. That's awful. (sighs) So if that can happen, just got to hit somebody hard enough that it equals an NFL tackle. Hello, beautiful people. Welcome to our third episode of Bro Taste This. I am Juan Legend, and joining me today, I have our co-hosts, Luis Pablo and Jay motherfucking May. This week, we will be talking about the most current events of the week, what actually happened to Gabby Patino, then we will dive into our first experiences in the service industry, and to finalize, we will jump into something personal, our first kiss. With each other. Thank you for joining us. Uh, how are you guys today? I'm good. I'm good. Great day. Can you speak into the microphone? Beautiful, beautiful Wednesday. I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> beautiful Wednesday. I'm not used to talking into a, into a mic, you know. Yeah, yeah beautiful yeah. Wednesday night. I'm trying to give like you the attention. Face. You know, I'm trying to make eye contact with you. You gotta People make eye contact. Like, we're here on hump day. Instead. We're here on hump day. We're recording on a separate day. Instead of our usual Thursday. Instead of our usual, but it's, it's yeah. fine, man. Yeah. I'll some dumb, change it up, you know? Some dumbass yeah, has yeah. something Go to do tomorrow. Go from missionary to doggy once in a while. Exactly. You know? Switch it up from missionary to girl on her back. <laughs> <laughs> I only have, yeah. That's Switch what it I'm up, saying. man. I got two moves. I got girl one. on her back. <laughs> Classic. You got missionary on bed and missionary on the floor. Those are my two moves. <laughs> I've spilled all over my sweats. You would do girl on her back, you nasty. <laughs> do the Mormons really fuck through the sheets? Or is that a myth? <laughs> what? How does that even, what does that even mean? <laughs> there, there, there's a group that does that. I don't, I don't know I if it's, it's Mormons. the Mormons. There's a weird Christian subset that does that. What is that? So, like, you just open the hole? You, you like you cut like you cut a hole it's in there? It's almost like a Halloween sheet. Yeah. Is but that? also a hole down there. So why why do they do that? Why? Uh, I don't know. I just know they do it. It's unholy to Jamie, see the naked bodies. Are we sure that that exists? Isn't that just some family guy shit? You know, you, know, you know that doesn't even make sense. Cause why? Why would you? Why would you want to cover her body? Yeah, it makes no sense. It makes Bro, no sense. That's, that's, I, that's I heard a point. hilarious joke years ago, but it's always sat with me. Humans were born without clothes. <laughs> <laughs> the joke goes, my girl had been on and off for a couple of years now. It's on when I see her body. It's off when I see her face. Absolutely brutal. <laughs> uh, cheers, boys. Cheers. Cheers, everyone. Cheers. What are we drinking today? Uh, today we are drinking... Somebody would give us a breakdown. Josh Sellers Cabernet. This is a uh, California Cabernet. Yeah, what do y'all smell? Let's try to do like a... Somewhat Anthony style breakdown in there. Ooh. Ooh. A lot of alcohol in that. That is a yeah, strong wine for a Wednesday night. Oh, yeah. But tomorrow's Thursday, it's practically day off. Now that, that'll that wake you up. That is a Not... strong. I get smells of tobacco. For those of you drinking alongside at home, uh, today we're drinking Josh Sellers Cabernet Sauvignon Blanc. Not Blanc. <laughs> <laughs> We're drinking Josh Sellers Cabernet. This Sauvignon. is actually really nice. Oh. That's next week, Sauvignon Blanc. Sauvignon Blanc next week. He's just giving you a heads up. Yeah, so far we've only been drinking red. Yeah, bro, we're... bro, taste this. We're like, bro, drink red wine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're right. That was sure. a knee slap. <laughs> <laughs> Get a lot of this guy. <laughs> this guy. Uh, you know, it's lovely. Uh, we should. Not really. No, it is pretty acidic. Very. Not dry at all, though, which I like. Very full body. 
very full body. She's Long a nice brother. That is a strong. Uh, <clears throat> Josh Sellers was created in 2007 by uh, Joseph Carr as a tribute to his dad, Josh. Fucking cool, Josh. Fucking cool. Uh, the average rating of this wine, uh, we have the year, I believe, 18? 19. 19. 19? 2019. So average rating is a 3.9, which is not terrible. Out of 5? Out of, out of five, out of five. Uh, average price is fourteen dollars, uh, give or take maybe one or two, depending on where you're from. Yeah, we're we're not wine snobs around here. Yeah, we're not yeah. wine snobs. Uh, I really like it. It's good for the price point. I do. I think well. it's great. Yeah. I think it's really good. Um, great every every day drinking wine. This is a great overall drinking wine. Uh, yeah, for the price point, I don't think you can get much better. I think it got. You know, pretty decent rating, and uh, I think all of us here like it. What brutes would you guys um, say you guys taste in there? I definitely taste some uh, some blackberry. <laughs> I get slight charcoal, a little bit of vanilla, but just in the beginning. I taste a lot of raisins and plums. Raisins and plums? I was going to say that. Yeah. A lot of purple fruit. Yeah, mm -hmm. before I said blackberry, I was going to say raisins and plums. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Oh, it's really good. Highly enjoy this wine. And that brings us to the first segment of the week. The date is 9.22. My heart rate is 87. And I have walked uh, 32 steps today. I don't know how that's possible. <laughs> <laughs> I'll walk to my car and back. That's the only place. You know, I, was, so I went to the gas station right before I got home today. And I really had to pee. And I ran in there, and I'm like, fuck, what if I walked in and somebody was taking a shit? Well, the next best thing happened. Somebody had just taken a shit because it reeked as soon as I opened the door. It, you could just taste it. Dude, as soon as I opened the door, it's like someone punched me in the face. Oh, we're not going to address it. You just said taste it. Uh, hints of blackberry. Hints of, hints of, hints of raisin. Real earthy. Some, some earthy acidity. terroir. It was a gentleman. Dude, I, I was really upset. Must be I'm Italian. Like, yeah, I really wish I didn't pee. I should have just waited till I got home. I was yeah. really disappointed. Uh, let's get into the news of the week. Juan uh, Barbosa is across <coughs> me. We got Jay May in the middle, and uh, I am Luis Pablo. So Juan, take it away. I know you wanted to bring up a subject that we all did a little bit of research on. Yeah, I just wanted to bring up the all too popular um, Gabby P case right now uh, with Gabby Petito. Is that right? Correct, mm -hmm. Gabby yeah, Petito. Um, yeah, just want to bring that up with you guys, kind of see what you, uh, your thoughts are on it overall. Um, yeah, just kind of wanted to open it up to discussion, see overall what we all think about the situation, and yeah. Jesus, that was a nasty burp. Uh, yeah, yeah I, uh, a lot of my research was done through a coworker of mine in the last week who brought up the case to me and said, hey, did you hear about that one thing? And I said, no. And so he proceeded to inform me everything about it. <laughs> uh, they just found her body as of a yesterday. Yeah. Oh, day, yeah. Maybe. It was like a day or two it's ago. It's all going day by day. so it's, yeah. yeah. So it's mm -hmm. the 22nd today. So, you know, obviously there's going to be more news coming out soon. And it's developing. E like, correct. Almost new details, crucial details are coming out day by right. day. Did, so. did they find out what the cause was? I think that they're working on an autopsy at this moment. I think yeah. that they haven't confirmed yet, but that they have said that they're suspecting homicide. Homicide. But yeah, yeah they, that they're uh, suspecting homicide. It seems yeah. like a real, like a, like a, a live action movie, just like one hundred percent folding, like unfolding. Yeah, the way the way, I mean? the way it's been presented. Yeah, yeah. It, it has been presented almost like a movie. Right. So yeah. like yeah. keep, keep like, you're in cliffhanger, like, cliffhanger, yep. cliffhanger, cliffhanger, constantly, constantly. Get your like your brain chemicals like hitting that in just the right way mm -hmm. yeah no i'd watch a movie about that <laughs> yeah i mean there's a show you which is very similar to what's going on here yeah um and it's, it's kind of crazy that the one guy who well the one person who was the number one suspect was obviously the boyfriend who yeah. she went on the camping trip with and he seemed to get away for the longest time and i believe right now he's on the run still yep they still haven't found him. Um, so do you think he did? 
Yeah, one hundred percent. Yeah, of course, one hundred percent. He like, what's the, what do you think is the motive here? Just abusive relationship, just. Yeah. You, you think that's just I mean, it? It's hard to get into the mind of a psychopath, but. I think ultimately uh, we see yeah. this time and time again, man. Like they went on a trip and maybe they argued and like it sounded because they had um, they had been or they had gone viral on a video already where they had been shown to be arguing in front of a body cam footage with a police officer. Mm-hmm. Right. So they kind of looked like maybe a toxic ish couple. If, at the risk of, you know, sounding judgmental or whatever. But, I mean, that's what it looked like. Yeah, time. that's what, it, like, the presentation was like, right? Yeah. So, if you... I have heard of, like... I mean, we've all heard of couples that, you know, are a little, like, much for your taste. Mm-hmm. But yeah. they happen to, like, be in it, you know? And they, they don't know how to, like, walk away and stuff. Right. So, like, sometimes they cross certain lines, and then other times they'll, like, cross even that line that they hadn't crossed before. Mm-hmm. So, this guy was, like, a domestic violence, like, yeah, the, a guy who would commit that. Then yeah. I can see that, like, maybe he just, like, hit her too hard and he didn't mean to or something like that. Right? Just putting out a scenario. Right. And even, like, it could have totally not been that. He could have, like, strangled her and, like... We also don't Something know. Else. I mean, no one knows at this point. Right. The only person who really knows is going to be him. And right. he, uh, some reports say that people had seen him camping by himself for a couple of days. Like they had actually. So we don't know if that was a plan for him to get out there and and do the the murder, or if like something was an accident and it kind of went out of hand, or this has been an ongoing proce- like procedure, and this is kind of the first time it it really went overboard, but. The fact that he was seen can't be by himself, the fact that somebody in a social media post had seen, I think the FBI saw the van like in the back of a TikTok or something, and it was just the the van on its own Mm -hmm. without anybody around it. And when he came back, they were like, well, where's our daughter? Where's, you know, the girl? And he just denied any comments. it It took a few days for the... Yeah, he refused to speak on the matter, which is obviously suspicious from the get-go and the moment they found her body he like fled yeah he was staying with his parents and then afterwards he just fled and went from there so he went on that camping trip that you're talking about where he disappeared into a florida natural preserve yeah Yeah, so um oh i did want to get a few more uh thoughts on that what do you guys think of like the media criticism like did you guys hear or happen to run across the words um missing white girl syndrome or anything like that no I did not Mm -mm. no there's this like in my opinion pretty accurate uh, media criticism that's being thrown out there of like the major media institutions right now oh how they're making a big deal about this yeah how they're um, throwing all these resources at this one particular case Mm -hmm. because she's like a prettier middle class um, young white lady versus if you change like the white variable they may not be right. caring nearly as much and she also had a pretty decent following on uh, social media if I'm not mistaken I think she had a popular page in the van life culture mm. yeah mm-hmm. so I did she, hear that, that she, she was, was already like a little bit of an yeah she already had a small like following and yeah or a decent sized following for like you know someone who's who's not ultimately famous in the word in, in the sense of the word famous but yeah i understand that part too where it's it, there is definitely more eyeballs when she is in, number one like you said she's a pretty girl who you know had social media followers and yeah they are gonna put way more eyes on it and way more resource on it which is you know ultimately what they should do for everything yeah you, you think that's a benefit to you know that it's getting so much publicity it's a yeah. benefit for her but i kind of think that it's it, quite hard for her family you know what i mean to get yeah, some what everybody it knows like yeah. that where... could be a lot you know what i mean it's yeah. like it's like would you rather just have it be low-key you know you have it low key? you know what i mean yeah. i feel like but, i would rather yeah, have it low-key would... so when you when you say like when you say that it's like i'd almost prefer like to not have all that attention yeah. and to not you know what i mean i don't, I, I don't I think, think of it as a privilege though, was like a big part of trying to keep it um in the in the 
I guess zeitgeist. They yeah. they were out there giving interviews all the time, like, and they were doing it from like a look for her perspective. It's not it malicious. just help us out. It's just help us out. Yeah. Right. right. But like there is that that it, there's just that like coincidence that there's been 710 missing indigenous women in the same state where she went missing yeah. and in the last 10 10 years or and there's this one lady who goes missing and like it's just it's been a national like wildfire essentially it's just yeah well like so many people that don't talk about shit on social media are just talking about sharing things sharing yeah this and that. i saw an article shared like clearly this was a sign of a uh, troublesome relationship and you know always keep your eyes out for something it's like i mean i understand that it what's well, when something like this happens it's you know number one i think we can all agree in the room that we're all sad about it and nothing like this should happen to anybody but it is always with any tragedy people will use that to just get likes and elevate their own platform mm-hmm. and be like yeah. oh i feel so sad and i'm going to share this article almost okay. like making it about themselves right, right. which right. requires no effort to hit yeah. the share button yeah and post it it's you know when you see somebody type out a beautiful journal and saying like please if you see somebody who's in trouble and they just share it and it's, it's kind of just like hunger but that's i think we we can all just take a step back and realize like that's what social media is now it's just people that are like hungry and want to get likes on, on anything i mean especially with a situation like that like domestic like violence it's like there's even even cops won't do anything like even they'll come to your house ask what's going on if there's no marks on you there's no like physical fighting they're not going to do anything so it's yeah it's no different like that's how they handle the situation because you can't gauge them you know you don't yeah. know what's going on and you, you can't you can't tell the difference you know yeah so, it's it's always tough to I mean, really... must, anything with like uh relationship violence mm-hmm. it's it's super tough because then you start getting into the the fact of i mean i know with like with kids it's different because they never want to separate the kids from the parents because it ends up getting worse but there yeah there's always going to be the one or two variables that like like something like in this case where somebody probably saw a friend of hers might have been like i was telling her the whole time and she didn't listen right. it's like yeah yeah you get those all the time yeah so ultimately uh quite a sad tragedy um something i wanted to bring up today is the fuck is that on the screen uh how you guys feel about uh this is a more sport conversation but how you guys feel about the world cup possibly being every two years instead of four just wanted to get your guys's hot take we don't talk about it for a while, but it is something being discussed right now in the world of soccer. Is that really? I'm not. Yeah, I'm not with it. <laughs> I'm not with it. It's it's it. it it's a possibility. It, it's. I don't think it's gonna go through, but they're, they're talking about it. Yeah. If anything, three, not not two. Yeah. Just because it's sacred, like it's exciting. Like I'd rather have it be every six years. It's huge. Like you make you want to build that tension to be like, hey, I'm about to prove for my country that this is. Right. Like we're the real deal. Like I can win it for my country. But if it's every two years, it's like, who really cares anymore? You know what I mean? Like they're saying that the thing that's going to benefit is uh, players can play more. through it more in their prime years. They should yeah. only get two chances. Like but it, yeah, they should really shouldn't get more than two chances. I think yeah. If if you're good enough, which I mean, it sounds shitty. You don't make it, it there, right? If you get hurt, sucks to suck. I mean, in a situation that's like it. Messi. Yeah. <laughs> As a backchair quarterback saying, like, well, if you're good enough, you'll make it. It's like, it is tough. But, yeah, no, I agree with George's point. It's it's sacred. Like, the four years yeah. makes it an event. It's if, sacred. It is if you sacred. had it too much, you would take away from the special. Right. Yeah. Like, and, it'd be like if the Super Bowl was, the Super Bowl is like, cool every year. But if there was, like, the Super Bowl is only every four years or something like that, like, it, it would definitely change. I mean, and it's it's different. It's different than football. It's different than basketball. Because in basketball, they have to go through college. They have to go through this whole thing. They can't get into the NBA till like twenty. But yeah. with soccer, when you're a professional athlete and you're up there playing for your national team, you're playing for your national team at like seventeen, sixteen, yeah, very true. eighteen. So they yeah, have. Ronaldinho played it. He was he was Ronaldinho seventeen. Has two World Cups because yeah. he played in it when he was eighteen mm-hmm. and made a couple appearances in the team. Yeah. And then he was in his prime years and was able to play a couple more. Right. I think Rafa Marquez, who is Mexico's most. Uh, yeah, prestigious player and most coveted player of all time. I think he played in five. Yeah, so yeah. when he's like, just goes to show if you're good enough, right. you'll make it. You'll back. fucking. You'll be there plenty of time because yeah. when you, if you think about it, 
think about 16 years or let's say 18 18 years old so at least 18? like 32 you know at least that's 14 like, years that's yeah. that's three world cups if you yeah, can't do it in th- cups doesn't seem right. yeah. if you if you do it in three if you do that's it in three world cups yeah, so he must have done it right when he was eighteen. Yeah, he was doing it like thirty nine, thirty eight. Yeah, 38, yeah. I, yeah I think it must be four. I don't think it's five, five. Yeah. <laughs> so I mean, there's no, there's no excuse for that. Like they don't, they don't, you know. It's, yeah, no, I, I think if your country's four, not gonna make it in that thirteen years, they're not, they're not yeah. gonna make it in your lifetime. Like, and it just, it should just you're playing show lifetime. nations like uh, uh, Germany after crashing in like two thousand. I think it was six and. Uh, eight and ten yeah it was like 2006 they had this famous uh overall program that they dubbed das reboot and so they were like listen we're gonna assemble the avengers of germany and we're gonna win the world cup and then they did in 2010 Mm -hmm. oh no they didn't win 2010 that was spain they did in 2014 yeah they did in 2014 they legit were like all right we're gonna hire uh joaquin law and he came through and he, he picked his guys and he played a pretty interesting team and so yeah no i think uh like like we said if you're good enough you'll fucking make it and if you don't then 100 percent, 100 percent. and the just the way that that soccer is going countries are getting better so it's yeah. getting more competitive it's getting more exciting it's not Who, like who's it's, getting better you even usa, USA specific, team specifically is like you could maybe qualify <laughs> they're starting they're starting to do like what well, they're starting to have like camps here like like yeah. like they do in europe so like kids are starting they're yeah, leaving their home they're leaving their homes at like 12 13 years old and going to these going to school academies. and then playing oh, for oh. academies there um and then yeah. they're they're breeding them so i mean that's how they do it in europe and yeah it's yeah. everyone's on the come up soccer's yeah. coming up so that's cool that's usa awesome. soccer's coming up big yeah usa soccer is, is looking like a they could do some damage, or at least you know, because there's players like uh, Christian Pulisic, Weston McKinney, uh, Chris Richards, uh, Giovanni Reina. These are all names that we'll be familiar with in the next couple of years because they, at the age of 16, 14, they, they've been living in Germany. Yeah. So they're gonna just continue to do that with a lot of younger players and yeah. get the opportunities that. Uh, other countries get at that age just because they train go, with the they go through the academy right? and yeah. they play in the you know the under 17 champions league and whatnot so with that said i have a quick question for you why do you think the usa women's are so far advanced than other countries but it's the other way around for men's because they were provided the same resources as the men but the same resources that were provided to the women aren't provided to the women in other countries so like you're saying france and germany they didn't they just didn't care about the women's correct. like okay correct so we we just treated the men and the women equally yeah but we had the benefit of other countries not doing the same mm-hmm. because in this country we've always been very woman forward and we had the benefit of having not only really good talent like the likes of um you can go back to like uh amy wambach and you know megan rapino and you had carly lloyd and so you had all these you know really good players who would have been good no matter what yeah. but the fact that they were allowed the same opportunity as the men the men were given the same resources they just didn't have the same opportunities and i think they were trying to cultivate from within and promote players through the mls mm-hmm. which at the time you know especially throughout the 90s and 80s like the mls isn't what it is today now players are playing in their prime in the mls and they're not they do want to come play in europe but there's a lot of good players like uh uh, Sebastian Pepe, who's uh, killing it at FC Dallas, so he's 18 and he's like, I'll no, kill it here. here. Yeah. yeah, so it's uh, I think that's the main reason. Yeah, okay. Okay, yeah. well, we're going to move on. Uh, today we're going to talk about one of uh, the most interesting topics. We're going to talk about some of our first, so some of our first jobs some of our first uh kisses and uh we'll go from we'll go from there yeah. let's let's actually start with Luis's first kiss um while yeah. we're at it yeah who you want to start with that? who cool. where and how uh, Aaron. 2009 mm-hmm. with who uh, i'm not gonna say who because i will uh hold that respect to uh him i don't kiss and tell yeah i don't, I don't kiss and t- i don't think he wants me to just uh kiss and tell so uh, it was at the eighth grade uh, boat dance. Okay. And I had a fantastic time pretending to dance. And I remember at the time, I thought it was really weird, even as an eighth grader who's 14 years old. The DJ was probably drunk. 
<laughs> it was only 14 year olds and he was out with the tie he, around his head mm. like like oh, a dad at no. a wedding <laughs> he was he was sweating dramatically it was like 2008 or something it was or... 2009 if i remember it might have been 2008 2009 i can't remember but it, it must be one of those two years and yeah the dj was like probably like six two or something and he got out on the dance floor and he was like jumping around with us and he goes he whispers in my ear he goes get ready i'm like for what and then he puts his hand under my armpit and proceeds to throw me up in the air as high as he can and i'm wearing my dad's dress shoes so when i land i feel those things go through my knees oh. like i feel my heels <laughs> in oh. my asshole <laughs> and i land so hard on my heels and he goes yeah <laughs> great time kid <laughs> makes me on the ass. And he's like fist bumping with us and i'm like all right man that's cool and uh you don't you didn't go to the same uh, middle school that george and i went to but after you do the dance you proceed to jump into the lake mm-hmm. fully clothed for some reason no way yeah we, yeah we, it's like a tradition at school or something so we all, they're like, nobody go into the, they told us for like two weeks straight, nobody go into the lake. You're not allowed to this year. And what do we do? We like walk out and they're like, all right, your parents should be like telling them to pull around. And we're all like turning around and sprinting as fast as we can towards the lake. And I went in shoes and everything. <laughs> I was like, I'm not missing my chance. <laughs> and yeah, afterwards, uh, the girl that I was dating, what you call dating in eighth grade uh, at the time, I was like, that was really fun. And she was like, yeah, that was fun, too. And then we just, like, had a pack, and I went home and jerked off for probably eight days straight. So. <laughs> <laughs> Told all my friends about it. And I was like, dude, she fucked oh my oh, God, man. dude. I felt her body on mine. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, dude, that was crazy. That's dude, nice. the DJ Ooh. threw me, like, tempted in the air. Did you see that? He could have killed dude, me. Dude, he played long. We were grinding so long, man. Did you see that? <laughs> Our idea was grinding. It was just, like... <laughs> oddly moving around each other while the music was playing we were like two seals out of water <laughs> who happened to be next to each other <laughs> we just happened to be next to each other uh so yeah that was that was my first so juan what about yours as he chugs the rest of his wine he's like my first restaurant job <laughs> no, no 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 first kiss buddy shit um i was Ooh, probably smiling. Second grade, probably 13, 12. Um, here in Lake Geneva, no, not here. This is Elko. He's wiping his hands in Lake sweating. Geneva. My cousin's name is he's right. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck are you saying? <laughs> nah, but point is, um, I was in Lake Geneva. Um, uh, my parents had their version of what the business they have now is, but like a okay. domestic style, yeah, we're like running it out of a home essentially. So they had rented a whole fucking apartment to do that in Lake Geneva and they had people coming there every day and stuff and I would show up there and I had a little room where I would have a Nintendo GameCube and I would either like chill by myself do my homework do whatever I needed to do or a lot of times I would go outside and hang out with like the neighborhood kids of the apartment complex there was a a few cute little girls sorry that sounded weird <laughs> you were also a boy at the time. You yeah, were, I was like, also like twelve. Applicable, applicable. <laughs> Literally twelve. I <laughs> and uh, but just to show you how old I was, this girl asked me for my phone number, and I was like, "Do you need the area code?" <laughs> so that's how old I was, right? That's how naive I fucking. I don't want to. I'm gonna interrupt your story for a quick second. Do you, did you guys ever have to write a girl's phone number on your hand? No. No. No, I don't. I can't. I, can't I had a. That. I went to a dance one time. It was like high schoolers only. That like that was the rule. So to get in, you needed a high school ID. And I met some girl from like, by the way, like 30, 45 minutes away, which might have been, at the time, she might as well have been across the country. That's an accomplishment at that time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you're telling your buddies, and they're not believing. You. Right. And you're. Yeah, sure, buddy. She's yeah. like, oh yeah, we should, we should like, if you ever come to one of these again, like we should hang out. And I'm like, yeah. And I wrote her phone number down on my hand with a pen. And bro, by the time I got home, I just looked at my hand and I was just crying. I'm like, this is impossible. <laughs> All right, please continue. Um, yeah, we're sitting at the apartment complex. I'm getting to know the neighborhood kids. There's like these, there's this group of girls. They're like 14, 15. 
Um, they, I don't know what happened, but they kind of get a liking for me. They start talking to me, and um, eventually we're one day we we became friends and we we're just all hanging out, and they both decided to kiss me like at the same time or whatever. You said both. Yeah, both at the same time. Both? And, bro, I, I was a little kid, like, ner- usually do not, not, not playing that well, you know. <laughs> that was you know, you- probably fucking nervous as all hell. But here I was nervous because, like, one of them was really cute and the other one was, like, not so much. <laughs> so you kissed them both at the same time? <laughs> they both kissed me on the cheek, right? And I wanted to keep kissing the cute one. Obviously. But I didn't know how to tell the other one. So, so. did you have to be like, hey, I'll... <laughs> You, you yeah, I'll kiss you, you after. I'll you, kiss you next. <laughs> you told the not so cute one, "Hey, let's make out." <laughs> so that way, it's like even. <laughs> you're like, oh, we gotta pay it forward. <laughs> but yeah, essentially, um, the slightly not so pretty one had a liking for me. Of course. Out of both of them, so I had to find a way to just push her away from me, tell her like I was busy all the time, stuff like that. You know, and, uh, but yeah, eventually everyone got the hint and I ended up, you know, kind of, you know, probably kissed that one pretty girl on the pet, on the cheek, on the lips once or twice. And, uh, other than that, and that was it was, it. yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't nothing too interesting. George? So you know me. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, I wasn't like, I wasn't like sixth grade. Um, we, I actually... I went to a, uh, my aunt was a, is a te- was a middle school teacher at the time and she would have, I'd hang out with her a lot. Um, so she'd had me go to like this event that she had at her school in Waukesha. Um, and then doing this event or what, I don't even remember what it was, but I met this girl. She was like two years older than me. I was in like six, she was like in eighth grade. And I just had to exert confidence. <laughs> So, like, we ended up we ended up talking. I got her phone number, texting for a she while. She thought you were older, didn't she? I don't know. I mean, I don't remember. That's what happened with me. Yeah. But you haven't seen George in the young days. <laughs> I was like, six... had a glow up. <laughs> Sixth grade, I was it was already glown glown. Oh, okay. By fifth grade, fifth fourth grade, eh, I was I weighed about the I weighed as much as I did in fourth grade up until probably like eighth grade. Let's just say that. Yeah, I'll be honest. Oh yeah. Of all the people I know. Well, no, too, to George is that like the most glow up I've ever seen to the point where you're like, is that the same person? Yeah, <laughs> yeah I was kind of cute. Whatever. I thought it was Besides the point, by like sixth grade, I was like, I was, I was, I was coming into my own. Um, but I, I met her. Um, we ended up texting. I met her up one time in a walk show by myself, and you know me exerting comp, like I was just like wanting to be confident with the situation. I was like, yeah, I've, I've kissed someone before. Never in my I've life. Made out a lot. <laughs> so my first kiss was like a hardcore makeout and it was like oh, hell, I did hell. not know how to do it like at first and I was 13 you were yeah. in their mouth open <laughs> yeah like I didn't know what I was doing it you was were just like giving CPR let's be honest yeah, <laughs> yeah. That girl back to I look like a I look like a fish out of water you oh, know goodness. so <laughs> so but it, it got better and then the we ended up dating for like a little bit in like sixth grade whatever whatever that is but yeah, that was, oh, yeah. That's about Jesus. it. Yeah. That's not bad. Yeah, you think about like what dating was back then? Oh god. It was yeah. like talking after school. Yeah, and that's like, all it yeah, was. Yeah, it's my girlfriend. Yeah. yeah. Do I remember I, I was like dating and I'm for nobody who's uh watching the room <laughs> I made finger quotes this girl for like a month and the only reason I knew it was a month was because somebody saw her writing my name on her hand and they're like, Oh, Luis, like Luis P and she's mm-hmm. like yeah, we're boyfriend and girlfriend. And then they told me, and I was like, what the fuck is she talking about? <laughs> I was like, what is going Dude, on? Middle, middle school like, this is news to me. Down. <laughs> this is news to me. Middle school's oh, a weird dude, time, bro. Get out there. Middle school is a weird time. Like, girls are emotional. Guys don't know what's going on. Dude, I was probably more we're emotional da- than half the girls I was we're, we're, da- we're dating, like, each other's girlfriends, like, every other week. Do you like, date even now, bro? <laughs> <laughs> like like they're holding hands during like a hallway and oh, trying to sneak it and then like, like pouring sweat <laughs> dude I, re- I remember my cousin getting slapped one time because he like broke up with his girl and his her friend came over just slapped him right across the face <laughs> have you ever seen a, a have you ever, the worst is when you see like someone who's old enough to get slapped like 
high school once you start like a 17 I saw a 17 year old get slammed never in my life have I seen that do you guys want to know the story yeah I would love to yeah uh, I'll bleep his name out but uh letter fuck. just get the letter here let me write it down on Snapchat right. <laughs> what, what does it rhyme with I can't even do that <laughs> oh okay it's uh dude and like the story is uh crazy Oh. <laughs> oh, I know John. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know John. John Doe or Jane Doe? <laughs> Why'd you say his name? Uh, so this guy was up to no good, uh, hanging around people he shouldn't have been hanging around with. And there was an incident where he proceeded to maybe hang out with a girl he shouldn't have been hanging out with. Oh, I've heard of this. And the real girlfriend found out. And again, 17 years old, like too old to know what you're doing. And you know not to cheat. <laughs> two friends. Yeah, you know what you're doing at 17. Like, that's, there's no excuse. Him and a couple of friends would like all drive together to go meet up with their girlfriends because their girlfriends were friends and they were friends and the one guy had a license. So they all proceeded to go and like word got out that this happened. It wasn't like he was hiding this for years. And the, the friend that was describing it to me from his angle said that she like saw his hand, her hand behind her back, like Michael Jordan about to dunk and just <laughs> wow, wound it up. She's like, I can't believe you fucking did this. And they were like, all right, we're going to go to Burger King. We'll see you guys later. We'll see y'all later. Yeah, we'll let you take what, so how'd she here. find out? Did they tell her or he told yeah, her? He I told think, her? What? He told her? No, I told her. You did? No, of course not. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> I was gonna say, I'm kind of surprised about that. I've yeah. told. No, I'm not gonna say. It. <laughs> you <laughs> told. You told. You spilled too much. Yeah. Oh, no, I'm not saying. Okay. I, have, I have told this person like, hey, I think you can do better. Like more than once to the point where I'm oh, sure yeah, yeah, that yeah, yeah. I'm sure that I, she knows at yeah, this point. Yeah, yeah. And so anytime I've been around them together, I'm like, hey, what's up? Like, so nice to see you guys. And <laughs> maybe he can. <laughs> <laughs> and she yeah she she fakes it enough to know like she fakes it enough for me to know like okay like, you're just you're not gonna be friends with me yeah. but at least you're like courteous enough yeah. and you know what you, you can't you can't have everybody like you let's but just go with that to be, <laughs> to be fair Lisa was a different person in high school I, I feel like this oh, isn't my, even a story involving Luis too much I feel well like I mean now. the fact that she doesn't like him yeah. yeah I remember I remember one of my girlfriends in high school didn't like Luis either like they didn't want me hanging out with Luis talking to Luis like I think it's because everybody just thought I was crazy yeah just because they thought he was crazy they thought he'd get us into trouble but really yeah, yeah. That's yeah. Right. like she you legit didn't, oh, you didn't know yeah, like, I guess I didn't know 14 you, through I would even go 22 Luis <laughs> <laughs> there was a lot of years where I was like figuring it out I was thinking about this today uh like I remember a lot of it, there was a while where people would want me to do stuff because it was funny but for the longest time I was like oh they think it's funny but no they just thought I was crazy yeah. <laughs> there were instances where I would just like somebody asked, I forgot somebody asked me they're like oh dude how do you pick up girls like just as a joke and I was like they love when you bark at them <laughs> which now is like that you show them how to do it <laughs> so now that's like hilarious like if you saw a kid but imagine a 14 year old scrawny 5 6 kid walking through the hallway it's like barking as loud as he can <laughs> and the other funny thing that i would do is i would you know like when you're in school and you're like full of testosterone and you'd be around your friends and you would like push and shove each other like as a joke yeah, yeah, yeah. well then i, I was just, I was just about to say this i would proceed <laughs> to take my clothes off to to my underwear in school i remember him in the like gym in, taking in off the no. gym anywhere yeah. i would proceed to like take my shirt off i'll be like let's fucking go no way. <laughs> you would really do that yeah, yeah down to my underwear because i thought yeah. it was so funny did you ever do it like in the middle of class i did it everywhere i did it did, what would teacher say well i would do it enough that it was like hey hey quit what you're doing because <laughs> i would think we're fighting like, I just remember seeing World Star videos of, like, black people taking their clothes out to their boxers. <laughs> and I thought it was fantastic. Have you ever seen that uh, It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia episode where they're talking about that? Where some guys are arguing with him. And he's like, he's like, um, no, he doesn't take his clothes off. But he says, you know, he just starts saying, yeah. saying gay stuff to him. You know what I mean? Like, jerk me off. Like, I'll jerk, jerk you off now. <laughs> yeah, I'll jerk you jerk off right now. <laughs> and that was the thing. Like, I was a big troublemaker and a big bully at the time. But my way out of it was always just to act crazy or be funny. 
And so that's the way I would do it. Yeah, just lease. <laughs> <laughs> just act crazy or be funny. And most people don't want to kick your ass, but uh, this kid that ended up going to the military one time, I would just like, you know, we were friends, so I would like fuck with him. And one day he just, he had enough. Like, he had enough. What did he do? Dude, I walk into math class. He sat in the second of three rows in the middle. And I just walked behind him and I just fucking like to his shoulders. And I'm like, what's up, man? And he turns around and he was in wrestling. He was football. He was in, he was a state wrestler. And he grabs me. He puts his arms around me and slams me on the ground. And I was like, you're a fucking asshole. Not realizing like, oh, this has been 10 years of bullying. <laughs> he has finally had it up. And he's like, after class, I want to see you in the bathroom. And I'm like, yeah, you, fu- you fucking bet. And we go to the bathroom, and this kid just beats the shit out of me. <laughs> like, slams me on the ground, grabs my fucking backpack over my shoulders. And then afterwards, I was, like, trying to be cool about it. And I'm like, all right, man, you got me. Like, you're good. My like, good good fight, bro. Good fight. And after that, we were cool. <laughs> I saw him at the YMCA once, and he's like, yeah, man, I'm in the military. I'm doing well. And I'm like, that's great, man. That's yeah, that tracks. That tracks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, couldn't couldn't deal with the bullying, could you? <laughs> Gotta go take it out on innocent people. <laughs> you fucking asshole. Sorry, your dad fucking forced you to play football for ten years. Anyways, uh, I first, wish my dad <laughs> first job working at a restaurant. I think I Dude, have that was a long ass segue. <laughs> that was a long time ago. I think I have an interesting one. Uh, I like to hear. Uh, let's about. let's go with uh your first job and then first funny job stuff. overall. No, your first um restaurant your job? restaurant job and then um hit a story um about not it doesn't have to necessarily be that job but just a funny story about a restaurant that you working worked at. Working in a restaurant. Working in a restaurant. Yeah. Oh my goodness, um, I have so many. I know there's a ton. Yeah. Uh, um. Yeah, George, lead us off. Okay. Um. Before we start the segue, how about we uh we talk about the wine. For a second, I know we broke it yeah, down at the beginning, longer. but now that we've uh, finished, oh, my bad, my bad, my bad, my bad, my bad, my bad. George is proceeding to spill Josh Cabernet all over my uh, office table. All over our IKEA oh, table. He moved the glass, <laughs> bro. You got some on the Rice Krispie. <laughs> Can I use this or no? Yeah, go ahead. That's what it's for. Um, uh, would you guys buy this wine again? I bought this at Quick Trip. When I, uh, Did you really? Yeah. You know what? Shout out Quick Trip. Shout out Quick Trip. I go there way more than I should. Yeah. I go they have, the right amount. I'm not going to judge myself. They have really good chicken tenders. Like, they're yeah, they're really big tenders. and they're I fat and chicken juicy. Tenders today. Yeah. Yeah. They're good. Their, their hot box section is underrated. In my yeah. Their, their hot chicken is good. Mm-hmm. And then they also have... See, the thing is, you got to be smart about it. So, they have the hot chicken tenders, but then they got the cold chicken tenders. That are a dollar fifty less, mm. yeah. but it's still three of them. Mm. But they're like the previous day's chicken tenders mm-hmm. that they didn't sell, bro. It's all the same shit. Grab that shit, toss it in the air fryer. Fuck that, bro. Eat it cold. Right. <laughs> it's right. like black coffee. Yeah, no. I you get I've, used to it, bro. You're good. Right. You don't need to add sugar or cream. Sa- chick- you really chick- it cold? Chicken is that? Are you fucking around? No. No, no. dude. I used to. I, I used will send you a video of me eating the rest of them tomorrow. Cold. <laughs> You're disgusting. That's so weird. Bro, I used to microwave frozen chicken breasts. Because I would, I just wanted the protein and I didn't have enough time to cook between like work and stuff. I would oh, put it in, yeah. I would put in the microwave a frozen chicken breast for like out of the, out of the package yeah. and just some barbecue sauce and you just mild that down. Yeah, oh, I do what weird. you got. Yeah. Yeah. I do that, what protein, you got. that protein. That protein. Hey, listen, yeah. we can't judge. Shout no, but the wine, the wine's good. Um, the wine is good. I feel like. I don't know though. I don't know if I'll, I don't know if I I'd know buy it would... again for yeah, that, for that, for that price point. It's decent, but unspectacular. Yeah. yeah, I would have to have it with something like I having it now is okay, but yeah, I would I would need like a food pairing to go with it. Mm-hmm. I would need like a ribeye or or something. Right. I feel like for that price point, there's other options. We've been I feel like we've been running into a lot of big wines. I'm gonna yeah. switch it up. We'll switch it up next week. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We'll get something up. lighter or. I'll white. take care of wine next week because I've yet to buy a bottle of wine. Get like a Marc Blanc. Dude, I'm gonna go out. I'm gonna go balls deep. I'm gonna I'm gonna swipe the credit card on this one. I get that three percent cash back, baby. Prisoner. <laughs> <laughs> we should get a big one for the tenth episode. We're on episode three. We should get the like episode. We should get like yes. a bit like one of the episode ten. One of the larger ones, the magnums. <laughs> the magnum. 
Day might have to be. <laughs> might have to call off the next day. <laughs> Maybe twenty fifth episode. Twenty fifth episode. Yeah, twenty yes. fifth episode. Twenty five. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's a good we'll, number. Yeah. We'll, we'll, start, we'll get a magnum. We'll start recording twice a week. Anyway. For the fiftieth episode, we'll finish a box of wine. <laughs> <laughs> we'll stay on the air for two two and a half hours, just hanging out. Just. It's like, man, this wine is. How much is in this box? <laughs> Woo, we got slapped it a couple of times. Yeah, no, this, yeah. the last time. That's the Multiple last time I've ever guests. been drunk. Was the last time we got a box of wine. Yeah, Bro, I was like, I was like, oh, we're gonna have a nice dinner. We're gonna be chill, for a glass of wine. We all got drunk off wine. <laughs> all of us got drunk. Dude, the that wine drunk that you hammered, hammered bro. Yes. It's spinning. Yeah, I, don't, I wasn't spinning, but dude, the buzz that wine gives you though is so nice. It was I nice. I feel like there's like some other chemical shit in here that's like very relaxing or something. Because yeah. like the drunk I get from red wine is very relaxed, mellow. And almost at certain times, if you're on a date, may I even say romantic or sexy drunk? You know what? Because it's aphrodisiac. Yes. George and I have this ongoing joke that red wine makes us gay. And I think it's still true. Because I'm looking at you across this table. You're looking kind of smooth. You're making me nervous and smooth. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, enjoy it. I'm not gay, but I've never been tested like this before. That's true. In a hot room surrounded by <laughs> bottles of wine. And, uh, all right, so I first, would say for the price, you can get something better. For fifteen dollars, you guys think you can do better? Yeah. yeah. So maybe really? a ch- maybe a Chianti. A Chianti? Yeah. A Chianti. I think this one was around that price point, like fifteen. Yeah. This yeah. what is Next it? Gionelli. We'll get something good. Gionelli. I I totally I I think I'm a big. I'm going to go against the current here and say I'm a big Josh fan just because it's like big and not overly fruity for a Cabernet in the $15 like cheaper price point, yeah. you know? Yeah. Like usually when you're buying a Cabernet from California in the under 20 to like $18 range, it's going to be like packed with sugar, yeah. really mm-hmm. sweet, mm-hmm. and this isn't that, so I can appreciate it and I'll say, hey. My I get you. I've definitely met other people that have liked Josh wine. Like, yeah. They just like, oh, that's my go-to. And I was like, really? <laughs> <laughs> but like, but, but I get it. But I get it though. I get yeah. what you're saying. Your points that you're saying and why yeah. they like it. Yeah. It's unspectacular, but yeah. it's. I feel like it, ha- it. It has a strong like average. For sure. Like yeah. a strong baseline. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I can agree yeah. with that. Yeah. All right. We'll take a quick break and then we'll be right back after this. Uh... Uh, not a commercial. Just uh, I guess we're all gonna take a pee break. <laughs> it's hard to get around there. At my office, told me like, oh, me and my girlfriend have a vacation to Lake Geneva. We're gonna stay at the Geneva National Resort. He's he'll be staying at room thirty four C. If anybody wants to go and, <laughs> and wants to go give him a hard time. <laughs> <laughs> and it was interesting. I'm like, you're going to Lake Geneva? He's like, yeah. And you, you kind of forget, but yeah, it is a kind of a getaway. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely, it's like a staycation location for a lot of Wisconsin. 100%. Right. Yeah. Yeah, no, but, uh, yeah, that was my first job. It was, it was there. I worked there from 14 to 16 years old, or 14 to about 17 years old, 16 and a half, 17, um, around there. So my first couple years, two, three years, um, start off busing. I did everything in that restaurant, busing, dishwashing as a kid, and then cooking and you know i didn't i wasn't old enough to serve at that point um alcohol yet but uh yeah just the basics but it was <laughs> it was it was a, it was a crazy place to work to say the least the the owner is he's something else <laughs> he's, he's something else if, if anybody if anybody knows that place you know you know about that guy Jeez. like he's like I think most people listening to this will will know Can all like, Geneva. Yeah. yeah, and you know it's like no, it, you know this, it's this from, guy from May. I would even say March yeah. to like September. It is a fucking war zone here. Like you yeah. might as well be in Chicago. Like that's yeah. how crazy yeah. traffic and restaurants get yeah. in the in the summer season. Yeah, but this guy's just crazy the way he like yells at people. Like he's really cool to me. He like call me his. He's like he's like my son. Like he he has all daughters, Jeez. but he'd be really cool to me. But he yells at people. He, he. I mean, I don't want to get too much of it, but like he, talk, I feel like he just like talks poor about to his wife and how he speaks to her and like stuff like that. Yeah. It's it's like no, it's, it's, it's like it's like dox him right now. It's it's like stuff like that where it's like, man, this guy is kind of. Do you remember where he lived? He's kind of crap. I know exactly where he lives. <laughs> no, you Take just a just turn on yeah. 50? <laughs> <laughs> but um, but yeah, that's just that was just him. He he was crazy. He was you know he's. 
he ran that restaurant. He worked there his whole life. He never left Lake Geneva. He just, his dad owned it, and he, it's all he's done for his whole life. And, you know, but the amount of responsibility that he put on a kid, like with me, was crazy at a young age, man. Like, at like 15, 16, I've been there for like a year. I was like, his his guy, he would, I would cook, right? Like, but he would leave the restaurant for me for, from Entirely? like, for a whole shift, like four to eight. Like, he'd leave the restaurant as a 16-year-old, man. And I made the schedule for all the cooks, all the dishwashers, all the bussers. You I, made this schedule? Me. A 16 Why? Yes, he gave me he just gave me a ton of responsibility as a young kid. Like What was your reaction to this? I would even I would even pay myself and write it on a paper. I would do I'd get the tax sheet, I'd write it out, he told me how to do it, and I would write this stuff down just so he, I could go through it with him and he'd be like, "Yep, yeah, that's that's the right amount." And but he would he he would have me all this responsibility for me. I'd I'd go downstairs, I took inventory for him for all the food. Um, I did yeah. all of this for him, all this for him at at like sixteen years you were old. A fucking blessing to he, this man. Yeah, you were, I was. You I came was. in like a guardian angel to yeah. protect this guy's business. Did he take care of you though? No. That's, and that's what I was gonna say. And that's why I left. That's why I left, man. It was it was, was very just... it was very unfortunate the way I left. But we'll we'll get to that. But like, yeah, I mean, I I took care of. Nah, I took up everything. I took care of all of of everything for him. Um, but yeah. How did you? Leave? I I left because at that time. Um, we i one of my ex-girlfriends worked well i got her the job there and you were dating her at the time dating her when i was working there and i didn't get her the job but she got a job there and then eventually we Did you, broke were you dating before she got the job out yeah no no we weren't you started dating we, yeah okay. a little bit after she started working there but ended up breaking up and then they say don't I, shit where you eat. I I I I, I dipped out. That I was, think all three of us. Have. That was that was it. That <laughs> was it. That. He like he was like, I mean, he knew the situation, which is a little weird in general, and like it just wasn't a good a good thing for both of us. So I just decided to, to get a different job. But yeah, man, it was crazy. Like I made all the schedule for my friends. So on Wednesday night, I call it like boys' night. And I'd have all my buddies be the dishwasher, the other cooks, oh, the hell no. and we That's would just the way like do it. we would just like because it was the slowest Back night. House, it was the yeah. slowest night, so we would make sure we'd all hanging out together, having a good time. Bro, That's make fun. me some eggs. Yeah, <laughs> bro, I make myself whatever I want there. It didn't Maybe matter. A burger. It didn't matter. Was, was, was this some onion rings? Was this a nice place or what no? Kind of no, food it's like it? bar, bar and grill type okay. food. So like right. burger and stuff like that. Yeah. So. That's how, so you know Armando. Oh, you, you guys, buffalo wings. you guys know Armando and Isaac, right? Yeah. yeah. So Armando started working. There. I remember I trained Armando, Should we use and I trained, I tra- we'll out. We'll yeah. out. <laughs> and I trained, and I trained Isaac, yeah. um, how to how to cook, and they cook now in like a nice restaurant, and I was the yeah. one who trained them at 16 years old, trained them how to cook and how to run the line, at that wow, time, yeah, dang. yeah. So yeah, it was crazy. Like I had the codes to like to void stuff. Like that was me at like 16 years old, man. Yeah. That's interesting. How did you end up leaving? Just now we make full circle. Yeah, no, just like that. Like I we, we I was talking to him and I'm just like, I'm not coming back here. I'm like I'm like I'm not gonna work in the same place. It was weird because he was like almost kind of involved, which is even weirder. Like we weren't in a bad terms, like in a in a bad situation, but I was just like he knew we both didn't want to work with each other and I was like, Hey, I'm not gonna work here anymore and that That's was, fair. That yeah. was it, you know what I mean? It was just Did he like try to no make you stay or no 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 he was kind of he knew i mean it just he kind of read the situation yeah i just wasn't gonna that's what i ended up going to to a cafe at the time yeah started working at cafe yeah but there's a there's so many stories there man like let's hear one let's hear the one that or let's hear a couple you know i mean well like i told you he's a hothead right yeah so the kitchen's open like you can almost you can see the restaurant from there like customers can come up to that wind to that section and literally poke their head in the kitchen and just like look at you and start saying stuff to you um there's that has been this happened so many times i don't even know which incident it is but customer got mad about her food there wasn't great food there <laughs> i was 16 years old cooking at a restaurant it wasn't great food it wasn't amazing it wasn't no <laughs> no it we're wasn't. 16 years old making it for you yeah no they'd be like are those kids in the back <laughs> like but he would he would get mad at the customers for anything like he would start anything. arguing with them like no matter what it was yeah. he was right so he just starts going off going off he's yelling at this lady it's starting to get almost a little physical lovely here her husband comes in he starts to get physical with him 
he's like six, 55 years old, but he does not take anything. And he's, he works out a little bit. He grabbed the guy and he threw him out of the freaking restaurant with his hands. Threw him out. And it was about something stupid where the customer should have been right, but they weren't right <laughs> in this situation. Food cold. <laughs> yeah. My food is cold. Yeah, he's like, he's like, well, well. <laughs> yeah, so he, he always had an excuse for everything. So I asked for no mayo. Yeah, like he's had he's had <laughs> What did you say? <laughs> you can just give me a new bun, it's no big deal. <laughs> I will fucking kill you. <laughs> Yeah, no, but that was on a regular basis arguing with people yelling in the middle of the restaurant in front of all other customers like Jesus. they've had cops come there it's it was just it's it's crazy and again there. let's hear the name of the restaurant one yeah, more time yeah so cafe no <laughs> <laughs> it is harborside cafe is it still and it's called restaurant? speedos yep oh. oh speedos ah that makes way more sense yep. yes okay that tracks that tracks, tracks. That tracks yep. now it's called speedos. Yeah. yeah yeah it's always been called speedos it's oh, just harborside always... cafe speedos like uh, yeah that's yeah. all of it together yeah. well, why'd you call it harborside cafe that makes yeah i was like what like, the fuck like yeah. i thought this was on the other side I no no it's right in front of the lake right in front of the lake uh, yeah. this podcast does not endorse harborside <laughs> cafe speedos I have nothing but bad things about their food <laughs> and their service. Yeah, don't go there. Um, but yeah, I'd say I mean Jeez. there's there's funny stories there, but you know at cafe too. At cafe was cafe we got a lot. Oh man, cafe yeah. was something else. I was the John story. Oh my gosh, some of the dude my my John last Mr. night story. No, the John story, man. Some of the some of the John stories. Can, are, can we we'll talk have John about, on the podcast? Can we talk about one John story real yeah, quick? Yeah, please go ahead. Can can we talk about the? And time? We will use his full name. Yes. No. He would. He John. Would John Hetzel. Okay. Or as he likes to be called, John Hesse. Yeah, that's right. That's right. He um he's he's a character man, and the, he he does not he does not care, doesn't care, doesn't care if what anybody says, doesn't care about what food he's eating doesn't care if it was off someone's plate doesn't care if it this was came Corona. out of the garbage he doesn't care <laughs> but one time he he is um he's serving a table and a lady's like a lady everyone's done eating but a lady's there and she has scallops and he asked her he's like hey was something wrong with the scallops all of them were there and she's like no no i really enjoyed the dish She's like, I'm just, I'm, I'm full. Like, I, older I, lady. Yep, yeah, older, older lady. lady. She's like, I really enjoy the dish. Um, I'm just, I'm just full. And he's confused because like the majority of the scallops were there. Uh, probably like three out of the four were there. Um, he's like, he's like, that's odd. So what John oh. would do is like he would take the food in the back that nobody ate and he would eat it, right? If it's a full steak, a full fish, right? And by the way, scallops are individually, yeah, kind yeah. of prepared. So it's three out of four. So it looks like seven. no one touched it if it's, you know, if it's there. So he, um, he takes it to the back. And he, he proceeds to eat them. Um, and then he goes back to the lady and he asks her again. He's like, was something wrong with them? Was everything okay? You know, like a good service should be. And she's like, no, no, it's great. But she's like, I just can't chew them. So I was just, I just decided to like suck the, suck the juice out of them and, you know, enjoy it that way. And he goes back and he realizes that he just ate three full scallops that were in an old woman's mouth that she probably sucked for like a minute straight each. <laughs> and he just downed them. <laughs> they were just in her mouth, and she was. Yep, <laughs> yep. How did she not puke just, right in front of her? Just gumming all. <laughs> just gumming those scouts. You ten, baby. Yeah, yeah. No, that that that's gotta be the greatest thing ever. Oh, that is. Bro, yeah, I is never no ate anything. Blanket left on those bed. Oh. <laughs> I don't care if it was individual bruschetta. I would never eat something off of someone's plate ever again. I just, I can't. Yeah, that, 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 after hearing that, that story, story haunts you. me, man. Yeah, it was pretty fucked. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's what was that? Uh, what was your first job at, Juan Juan B? My first restaurant job was yeah. at a Perkins. In Delavan? Yeah, in Delavan. <laughs> so that was super interesting, man. I love that place. Because there was a lot of stuff that would be happening all the time. All the time. But other than... Is look, Perkins still a national wide restaurant? I think they're I think, closing I a think lot down, been dude. going bankrupt mm-hmm. as a brand and stuff. Yeah. Probably like Denny should, too. I mean, it kind of makes sense. There's like a small town restaurant that does what they do. Yeah. In, mm-hmm. in every small town. Lower prices, probably. Yeah, too. Diner, lower prices as well. Yeah, it's, ex- exactly. It's a diner that tries to follow like kind of BS trends once in a while, you know, like seasonal trends. Yeah, yeah. But um, yeah, I was I was a real quick before you start. 
Is that where you met your now fiance? No. You didn't meet her there? Do you? That's a different. Do you want to know? Well, I know you know her through high school, but did we, you guys start dating because of working there together? No. Okay. No, it had nothing to do with us working there. I started dating her and then I started working there. Okay. Yeah. You know. Um, but I was going to say, I met, like, I know Alo since kindergarten. Yeah, I saw. Yeah, that's cute. Yeah. That's cute. I saw yeah. a picture of you two recently on her Snapchat story. Yeah. Because you guys have, we won't say your last names here, but because we saw your last names were, alf- I never even thought about it, alphabetically, alphabetically uh, are close in the alphabet. Yeah. In the uh, American English alphabet. <laughs> <laughs> there was a picture just of you to be clear, two not right the next to yeah. one. Just to be clear, for all of our uh, overseas listeners, so. <laughs> yeah, you guys were right next to each other. What was what grade was this in? Was it kindergarten? Kindergarten. Yeah. Yeah, I saw that picture. And I'm like, Jesus. Yeah. So we, yeah, so we known each other since real small, we were real young, but we didn't start dating until we were in high school. Okay. All right. Yeah. But well, please, please continue. Um. Yeah. So. Perkins was, was a fun place. Um, I was a bartender. I was a cook there. I Do Perkins had bartenders? No, no, no. I was only a cook there. I don't know why I said bartenders. I think I'm just thinking currently or something. But I was a cook there. I um, got a lot of confidence and like in the kitchen and um, specifically cooking in that place, I would say. I think that they g- it gave me a base for like... From which to expand. Would you say you're a good cook now? Um, compared to like my contemporaries, yeah. Compared to like old... compared to the average Yeah, compared to the average guy. The yes. average Jose. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Compared yeah. to the average Juan and Jose, yes. <laughs> um, but other than average people, I wouldn't consider like put myself up against like somebody who's phenomenal or anything like that. I would just say I'm good for myself. <laughs> um, but uh yes, this particular Perkins in Delavan um, had a lot of things going on all the time. It's, you know, it's right off it's the a highway. Chain it's a chain restaurant. Like, just to give you some... It's burned down twice. It's burned down twice. It literally has the luck of the opposite of the Irish. <laughs> Whatever that is. <laughs> it's an old people place. Like, my, yes. my grandma loves Perkins. Dude, they, they <laughs> Alo was on my way here. I was like reminiscing with Alo about some old stories of yeah. Perkins, and she was telling me about this specific religious group of older people who are like in their sixties, specific like only and older, mm-hmm. and they would come in every other Sunday or something like that. Always request a back room, and they would always um, tell the ladies or whatever to step out of the room for an hour because that was their religion's male only prayer time or whatever and yeah that was the thing they would do and while they were doing that they were just in there trying to fucking flirt with the servers oh they were just being dogs. yeah they were just being dogs hey, dude. good for them they were just good being for dogs. Them. wait so the girl the servers had to stay in there with them we, well, they they're, were they're in there the like job. doing their job they're like hey we we, we need this or that you and need like, some more coffee mm, hey honey come here come here come here i need you to bend over for this or something like that you know like dogs they were like dogs and the the girl servers would like essentially re- uh, flip a coin for it and be like nah i don't want to do it this way you do it because well, like, they were coming often yeah they would come mm-hmm. in every other week or something like that so Dude, meal yeah Oh my goodness. Hey man. Let me just rattle off you a take couple your other you take your lumps. A couple of other um Perkins stories. They had hired a cook named Dante. Um who we had, love Dante. Um yeah, they hired this guy whose name was Dante. He was a cook. He was super nice to everybody. Had a um pretty personable and one day they had the police come in through the front door and tell them, Hey, we need you guys to all step out or whatever. Um, and we need you guys to open the back door. One of you to go open the back door. Yeah, because Dante's cooking, right? And he's a cook. So they do that. Wait, they ask all the staff to to get out? Yeah. Well, like, out of the kitchen. Because they don't want him, anyone around him. And, and they're like, yeah, what the fuck is going on? 
and they tell they the police tell the staff that Dante is wanted for killing his wife and their unborn baby. And yeah. I'm gonna take my comment back of saying we love Dante. That's not even funny. Bro. That is not no. In that that happened there. They they took him, they arrested him, and you know, he's gone. A year later, a different cook named Dante. May I add? Different story. Different story. Let's skip, right? Yeah, time skip. The, time skip. We have a server, um, nice, awesome, personable lady. Uh, who's dating a dude and his name is Dante and she, I believe actually he's he was a baby daddy or maybe maybe not um, but point is that they're dating and all she gets him a job at Perkins as a cook and he seems to be doing fine whatever a little bit of time goes by and he gets a few other friends jobs as a cook and he's gonna it, get the referral bonus yes yes exactly um Point and we this Perkins happened to be located exactly right in front of a eight um, a super eight so the motel chain right yeah yeah and this this guy with a few of his other cook friends while he was still kind of seeing one of the servers and his cook friends were married would hit up girls on Craigslist and tell them to meet them up at super eight and they would have like day long binges of who knows what in there at the super eight at the super eight shout out to super eight Man, shout out to super eight there. yeah they always have really clean needle disposal systems so shout out i mean we know what super eight's for yes it's not for having a nice getaway there's a reason small towns have them. <laughs> <laughs> right. for um uh, couples who are having marital problems for one of them to stay in and for uh Perkins cooks they have day binges of coke and hookers so <laughs> dude Perkins is a crazy place man yeah I feel like that would be a crazy place to work yeah. at just cause it is a chain restaurant we had an old lady That's who once I... shat herself while sitting at a booth and had to like trail all the way back to the bathroom <laughs> 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 no wonder this place is closed down and going bankrupt. That's all I have to say. Yeah, this place burning down twice is yeah. a blessing. In <laughs> they were trying to tell you something. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh my goodness. Wow. Let's, let's, let's hear about yours, Pablo. I didn't work at a, at a restaurant. I ended up working at a resort. So I worked at uh, the, the Grand Geneva Resort and Spa, which is a very big resort that has a total of like five or six restaurants it used to be the playbook club right it used to be the playbook club up until 1978 i believe until i was born do you guys know they used to have a semi-popular recording studio in there i did not know that and they recorded a bunch of like still used jingles did they record eddie murphy's party all the time because that's the only song that should be played <laughs> Eddie Murphy's Party All the Time is a fantastic underrated hit from the 80s and everybody should listen to it all the time I think I remember listening to that actually it's, stupid. it's a fantastic song that uh, it was Al Capone's spot though Grand it was Al Capone's spot yeah so it's a it's a huge Grand resort a lot going on. Damn, it was a yeah history. it's massive it's really fucking big like it's it's got it's own uh, postal code essentially that's where I started working my, uh, my grandmother uh, bless her heart ended up getting me an interview and I had a interview that's why I was interested in your interview process because my interviews did not go well I was 16 and up until oh, I was yeah I was 16 and I had like no job experience I had nothing and my first interview was to be a housekeeper at uh, the water park that they had I show up and I shat the interview they're like have you ever cleaned rooms before and I was like dude I don't even clean my own room like I don't know what you're they're like, yeah, I mean, and this is like a 16-year-old me, like no confidence, didn't know how to talk to people, very, very brown, and my facial hair looked like that of the Night Stalkers. So yeah. I was, you waited until you were 16 to get your first job? Uh, yeah, because you can't get a job before that, especially at a professional place. At 14, you can get a job. Uh, yeah, I think I must have been 16 because it was like my sophomore year of high school. So I was like maybe 14, 15, or 15, 16, I mean. We started working around the same time. Though. We probably started working around the same time, yeah. Well, you were uh, hired by a private entity. Dude, I was working at like 11 or 12 at a fucking Mexican store. 
Well, my, my very first job was actually helping my father and a uh, family friend out. You guys ready? Uh, cleaning garbage. So it was at a five-story Aurora hospital. That seems useless. <laughs> <laughs> and we would have to go to each our garbage can at a uh, hospital I mean, this is massive place, and so every cubicle, every I mean, when you go to a hospital, there's multiple floors. Yeah, it's ginormous. Yeah, it's fucking massive. And after hours, we'd have to show up like around seven or eight once the whole thing was closed, and have to throw out all the garbage bags, and replace them with all clean ones. And I was, I think, fourteen. Yeah, because I was already in high school, so I was fourteen years old doing this. The hazardous ones too. Yeah. So we'd wear gloves, and oh, yeah. that's it. Oh. Yeah. It was pretty. It was pretty gnarly. And you'd have full fucking like, this is when Star Wars was still just kind of popping off. You'd have full cups of coffee inside these like one foot garbage cans, and yeah, it was just horrendous. And you're going floor by floor, cubicle by cubicle, and it was fucking abysmal. Now I'm seeing my dad do this. He's like, "Hey, come on, let's fucking go." He's like, "Purale." He's like, "We got two more floors to go." Sí, let me go. Yeah, literally, you're on. You're on floor five. And you're like, we just got to work our way down. And you'd have this like pattern of loop that you were just like, all right, we're going to go boom, 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 go loop around. And then we're going to come back on the elevator and then do the same thing on the floor below, do the same thing on the floor below. And dude, it was horrendous. And I wasn't even getting paid that much. Like the main guy was getting paid well, or not well, but decent enough. Yeah. And so he would split that money with my dad. And then my dad would split his portion with me. So it's not like I was making my own money. I was getting like, 60 bucks and I think out of like two months of doing it I made a total of like 100 bucks Jesus so they ended up just like yeah dude my, he's like, my son will do it for that shit for free and he <laughs> gave me like I'm not getting like a hundred dollars in like two weeks yeah that was pretty shit <laughs> so then when I got an interview as a housekeeper at a, I didn't even mention that part because I didn't figure it was important and I didn't even want the job that much I was like I just need a job and I figured like getting an interview just meant like, hey, when can you work? Yeah. So I just showed up in like a dress shirt and jeans and they were like, so do you have any previous experience? Because this gets fucking busy. And I was like, I've never worked before. This is my first job. And I said that and at the end of the interview. They were like, you know, you don't do any cleaning. And I was like, well, I used to like clean at a hospital. And they're like, why didn't you say that? Like literally the person who just interviewed was like, why didn't you say that? And I said... Oh, I didn't think it was important. He's like, you didn't think it was important to bring up previous experience? I'm like, well, I wasn't, like, I wasn't hired. I was helping them out. They're like, yeah, who cares? You should have mentioned that. So I'm like, okay. He was kind of coaching me through the job. Right. <laughs> job interview. This kid's fucking stupid. We're not going to hire him. He can't even tie his own shoes. It's probably some 22-year-old recent college grad. And he's like, I have to help. It was some old uh, Asian lady who was not nice to me. And so after that, I think like a day or two later, my grandma's like, no, 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 no. And he's like, don't, she's like, don't work there. Like, I'm going to try to get your job at one of the restaurants. So I'm like, okay. And she ended up like smooth talking with the HR ladies. And I ended up getting an interview to work at the pool bar, which is just a college kid summer job because they have the pool bar open only for a certain number of months, usually through March up until September. So the only kids that can work there are college kids, right? So they just hire a bunch of college kids. They work there. And then when they leave at the end of the season, then they just close it down. So they, they knew my availability was essentially just, you know, I'm available in summer. And then when school year comes, I can only work maybe one or two days. I ended up interviewing with this really awkward uh, fellow. I'm not going to say his name on here. He was really, really interesting. He tried to grow out a mustache, and he was really just weird and distinct. And he would try to tell jokes that just would never land. And you're around college kids who are hungover and just high all the time and drunk. And one time, barely there. Yeah, but just, just like, dude, I'm here to collect a paycheck. Like, what do you need? And he would, he would always have like a joke of the shift. And one time, he's like, "What's a pirate's favorite movie?" when it's rated R and it did just exactly <laughs> just everybody <laughs> just would look at him and be like was that was that a joke like what's going on did you just have a stroke <laughs> <laughs> and I was 16 working around a bunch of 22 
23 year olds and that how was old like, was that guy though that dude was 28 maybe 30 at the time he was youngish but old enough to not be to know honest. better old, he would like old enough to know better old enough to know better he would hit on the, the the female servers and be like hey so like what are you doing after work and they're like yeah i'm gonna go party with my boyfriend and get drunk and do drugs and he's like you know you really shouldn't smoke like it's, <laughs> it's, it's this or that and it's like all right buddy all right <laughs> I actually have acid waiting for me in the back, so <laughs> the moment I'm cut from the shift, I'm going to go, oh, I'll start tripping balls, and that was my first interaction around, like, actual adults, and I think, you know, the three of us can speak for that, where your first job is your first interaction with real adults, like, it's not teachers, it's not coaches, it's not, you know, family, friends, Yeah. these are adults who have their own lives, and you can just be like, fuck you, Yeah. like, you could say fuck you to them, they can say fuck you to you, like, it doesn't matter. Yeah, they're not teachers who, you know, have to follow right. certain kind of rules by society. Right. Yeah. You don't have to respect them more than you yeah. want to. So that, and, you know, for me, it was, like I said, a bunch of college kids who just didn't give a fuck. So they would constantly bully me, talk about fucking other people. I mean, the amount of things I heard in that first three months of working there was just blew my mind. Like, I had this girl saying, like, she's like, yeah, I just I hate getting my pussy ate out. Like, I just hate it. Like, it's disgusting. Like, I pee from down there. And, like, I just hate it. Like, I don't know why guys want to do it. And this dude's like, okay, so how do you feel about blowing? She's like, I will suck dick any day of the week. And I'm just sitting there, like, <laughs> gripping the hardwood from the little Havana we were staying in, like, folding towels. I'm like, You're like oh, my name's Luis. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, literally. And you could wear sunglasses because you're out in the fucking sun. And I sh- we had these bright orange polos. I don't know why, but that that's all they were. And uh, a friend of mine had orange sunglasses. So I'm like, oh, can I borrow them to work at the pool? I show up with them, and that awkward boss of mine was like, you can't wear those sunglasses because they're only supposed to be black. And I said, well, I'm colorblind. And he goes, okay. And he just walked away. <laughs> <laughs> and all the servers were like, hey, what color is this? And I'm like, it's orange. Like, I'm not colorblind. And they thought it was the funniest thing. Like, Look at the 16-year-old. He doesn't, give a- <laughs> he doesn't fucking care. And it was just the most, yeah, it was the most probably fun I had. <laughs> like, up until that point, just because I'm like, oh, I can say whatever I want. And no one cares. And, uh, I can see you being crazy in a role like that. Taking advantage. Yeah. yeah, it was just crazy. And I remember one time there was this guy I, I worked with who ended up getting my my next job for me. He was like, hey, man. And I go, yeah, what's up? He goes, uh, listen, Luis, I'm not going to lie to you. I, I want to go home. And I go, yeah, man, that sucks because, uh, you know, I want to go home too. And he's like, no, but I have to go home. I'm like, Okay. Well, why do you have to go home? He goes, stretching. He's like, it's a hot day today. I'm like, okay. Like, he was just kind of weirding me out, yeah. acting awkward. I'm like, is he trying to bully me? He goes, Lisa, I'm not going to lie to you. I uh, took some acid, and so now I have to go home. So this is what's going to happen. I'm going to go home, and you're going to tell our boss that I didn't feel well, and I just left. So good luck. I'm sorry. And I'll see you tomorrow. And he just walked out. And then this female server walks up to me. She goes, hey, where the fuck is this guy? And I'm like, oh, he left because he said he took some acid. She goes, he took the acid right now? <laughs> and, I go, <laughs> and I go, yeah. Like, and she, I thought she was going to be mad because he left. And she goes, she fucking did it without me? <laughs> I'm just like, yeah, I don't know what's going on. And one of the funniest stories from working there was these – it was a, a rainy day, so no one's out there. There's maybe like a couple out there who's staying inside the resort, and that's really it. So I'm out there by myself. I'm folding towels, and the server comes up to me. She goes, "They, they didn't cut you before you came today." And I'm like, "No, like I, I, you know, I just came. Like they didn't call me or text me." And she goes, "Okay, all right. Well, you should probably go home because we're not." And she's like, "I'm probably, I want to go home. Like, so if you're here, then why the fuck, like, should I be here?" So I'm like, "All right, yeah, like, okay." And this group of five probably like 18 year olds walk up to me and they're like hey what's up man like is the pool open i'm like yeah like swim at your own risk like we might not be serving anymore but the pool's gonna be open just because it's raining and whatnot he goes okay do you know we can buy weed (laughs) they're asking (laughs) asking me and i go 
Well, you know, I could ask my friend, and maybe I can get some for you guys. I'm not sure. And they're like, oh, man, you see, I fucking... They're looking at you like, we should have talked to people. Like, this guy knows. Like, thanks, bro. What's your name? And I'm like, Luis. And he goes, Luis, thank you, man. Here's 20 bucks. Like, if just get it for us, and then we'll, we'll, we'll come and get it. I'm like, all right, cool, yeah. I'll text my friend right now. Damn, this As, is forever ago, isn't it? Because 20 bucks? I would have said, like, 40. <laughs> <laughs> they just gave me 20 bucks. Right. Like, here, man, like, when it comes, it comes, whatever. So I'm like, all right, cool. And... As I'm proceeding to whip my phone out and text my friend, my manager walks up and he goes, hey, like, I'm sorry, I completed, I thought I cut everybody, I forgot you were still here, you can go home. So I just put the 20 bucks in my pocket, <laughs> and I skedaddled. <laughs> and I, That's I great. skedaddled. That's great. And I, like, ran out of there. I'm like, those guys, those guys can't see me. <laughs> I gotta get out of here. That's great. And I just walked out, and uh, it was yeah, it was a really interesting place to work because it's not really a restaurant, although it's just connected to a bunch of other restaurants. Mm-hmm. So you'd be wearing like khaki shorts and white sneakers, and the moment you'd walk inside, people who you'd like essentially work with were wearing like dress pants, dress shirts, and you'd be around them, and they'd just look at you like, "What the fuck are you doing here?" Like I'm like, "Oh, I work outside." And they're like, "What the? F-? Then stay outside. We don't want the fuck. <laughs> You're sweaty. You smell like shit. What are you doing in here?" We got to wear deodorant today. Yeah. <laughs> and I didn't want to, for some reason, I wasn't putting on uh, suns- sunscreen. I just kept putting on tanning oil. No. So I, I fucking burnt to a crisp. And Luis is dark. You know, I, got, doesn't know. I got dark, dark. <laughs> <laughs> I got fried chicken dark. You look like fresh out the village dark. Dude, I, yeah. And I was, like I said, I had like awkward facial hair because I was, you know, a teenager. And couldn't even see it anymore. Yeah, you. <laughs> I had a mohawk. I had like that that straight crispy hair gel mohawk. It was awful. Oh. Did you guys ever have anything either dangerous or borderline scary happen at any restaurant job? Scary? I'll I'll present to you the reason I why I asked. Um, at Perkins, we had a gentleman who was drinking coffee in a back table early in the morning. And he was like a larger, bigger gentleman. And he was being really like obnoxious and rude with the servers and everybody could tell he was semi drunk. And at some point he gets kicked out by the manager and the manager's walking away and the manager's like seven, eight steps away. And the guy gets up and charges the manager, starts choking him. And the ma- this man is much larger than the scrawnier built manager, and like me and the the other cook had to go in there and like just yeah, fucking separate off. everything, you know. And just like what the fuck is happening? We didn't even know what was going on. We had like servers come in and like, hey, hey what the hell is going yeah. on out there? You just have to go out there. So this guy got kicked out. Yeah. So it's not like he's drunk. He, no, was he? The the patron was belligerent drunk in the morning. As he in was the just morning? in the morning, as he's just asking. That means he wasn't drunk from the asking, morning. That means yeah. he's drunk. From I don't the know night when before. he was drunk from, but he was just stupid. Jeez. Either drunk or on something. Yeah. But we thought drunk because the servers could smell some alcohol on him. So that's why, that was the reason the manager approached him and was like, "Like, you have to leave." And then the dude was like, "Yeah, yeah, I'll leave." Gets up and charges the, the manager. That's crazy. So that's why I ask you guys, <laughs> did you guys ever have anything like either semi scary or like kind of on the edge of that happen in a restaurant or? I don't know what's scary, but like, I mean, a few things that were kind of like, oh shit moments. Like, I've seen the cook like cut off part of his finger. That's, that's kinda... an oh shit moment. For yeah. sure. <laughs> <laughs> oh, bro, I have one too. I have one from. Um, when I found out I was allergic to scallops. So I was at cafe and, um, and you know, at the end of the night, they'll just, they have a ton of food. that's like, they food can't eat. Over, yeah. They can't eat. I never, I would always go to like Olive Garden and I always order the shrimp scampi. I, I remember exactly. And I always feel like, man, I'm a little uncomfortable. Like I felt itchy, but like itchy inside me, like not like, me too. not itchy, not itchy around me, but like it was like within my skin. And I was so like, within you guys, you both would eat sh- like seafood and then feel a little. So yeah, I I I'd eat that dish specifically, only that dish, and it'd be like, man, that's just, a little weird. I just want to add one little thing because he asked. For me, when I eat shrimp, like one ninety nine percent of the time, I'll be fine, but 
two times in my life where I've eaten shrimp, I've broken out into hives completely, and like my eyes will get swollen shut. I have had allergic reactions to it. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah. So, so, um, the scallops at the end of the night, there's a ton left. There's like six, seven scallops left. I'm super hungry that night. So what I decided to do just automatic, just, I ate like five, six of them, just shoved them down my mouth. Right. Yeah. Um, and you had never had them ne- before. I never really had scallops. Like I've had like a little bit of them, but like yeah, yeah, but like not, taste. like not, not a ton. Yeah. Dude, no, sh- like uh, two hours later. Um, I'm laying there and I get super itchy. Um, I'm having trouble kind of go to bed. I'm like super itchy the night. I wake up and I, you know how mosquito bites look? Like yeah. they're really small like that and they have like that white. Dude, I had mosquito bites the size of like they're baseballs. That's yeah. what I got when Baseball, I shrimp. Football, yeah. footballs. And they were like not just on my, they're like not just on my arms, not just on my legs. They were all over my body, like my torso, my stomach. Yeah. My back was covered in these huge looking mosquito and bites the stomach ones are so itchy. it was oh. it was so bad like i've never had that like people looked at me i showed them they're like dude you need to go to the hospital <laughs> and i'm I like you said you were laying down at home already. i was yeah but i showed them oh, next okay. day and i'm like people are like yeah you should go to the hospital I was like no i'm fine like it's just super itchy and i didn't know i was like oh man should i go to the hospital and someone's like just take some benadryl i didn't know what benadryl was and i was like all right it takes like one you can't or... be allergic if you pass out yeah <laughs> that's the model behind <laughs> benadryl right. So you're like you're like on the package it says like one to two. I'm about to go to work like at like five oh, at cafe, God. and I am like one to two. I'm like this is so bad. I can't take them. I'm taking like three or four. Oh. I took like three or four of those things. <clears throat> I get to cafe and I'm there with Bryce. I, I don't think you've ever met Bryce. Um, one of my good friends and um, we're uh, we're standing there food running, um, and all of a sudden I can just feel my eyes start to slowly shut. And I'm just like, bro, I'm not okay. I took too much of that, of this Benadryl. <laughs> and then I'm standing there. I was like, I can't even move, bro. Like, I'm just stuck. And I was like, he's like, are you sure you're okay? I'm like, I'm fine. I just, I can't, I can't talk or move. Like, it was like, I was fighting sleep that it was trying to force on me. But I'm fighting it. So I don't know if that's making me high. Yeah. I just think it was. And I'm just standing there. Putting you in this like in between state. In between, like in between sleeping, not sleeping. All I kid you not, I stood in that kitchen with people laughing at me, staring at me because my eyes were so bloodshot and barely closed for like two to three hours. I couldn't move, and I'm You're still getting paid to work. to work. I'm getting paid to work to not even move. Bryce is just like, I got it. Don't worry. Like you're good. So you're good. you really stayed there for a few hours. I stayed there for like there? two hours, and then it wore off a little bit. And what I, they, who was managing? What did they say? I don't remember. Everybody just like, yeah, he doesn't feel well. Yeah. He's, he's, here. he's just high. He's just high. We're he's paying just... him a few dollars an hour. It's not a big <laughs> yeah. five bucks. Who the yeah. fuck? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Burn that, he can stay there. there. Right. Yeah, yeah, so then I got... That's one chicken sandwich. Yeah. That reminds me like of... Uh, the, there was this one, not at a restaurant, but a very similar situation where the night before I wanted to get high, but I didn't have like a bowl or wrapping papers on me. So it's like, fuck it. So I grabbed the nug and I just ate it. Like, just <laughs> raw. raw <laughs> did you, like, it was a dog biscuit. Did you, did you feel high? Like, well, people have done it before. I'm like, dude, I... Did you feel high? No, so, of course not. Get this. <laughs> so I ate it the night before. I'm like, you know, I was walking well, that, up to my house. Placebo effect. <laughs> I started to feel like a little bit after an hour, but I'm like, oh, it didn't really hit that hard. It didn't hit like a one or two. Yeah, it didn't hit like a one or two. So. It didn't scratch the edge. I wanted it to. And I'm like, fuck it, whatever. Like it was a waste of a nug. And I'm like laying in bed, and I'm a, like a little fucked up, but not that, not that much. And then next day I wake up, and this was like at 11 p.m. when I ate it. The next day I wake up, and I am faded. Like no I way. am, I am fucked. But I'm not like high. I'm like a little high, but a lot of sick. <laughs> like I, I am, I am. I think that's up. just what you were, man. I think you, I was, just you can't get high like that. You, yeah. you really can't. You can. It's like a little, but I, like I said, I just poisoned myself essentially. But the problem was, I had to go to my engineering internship, and it was like six in the morning. So I'm up and I'm like dizzy, feeling sick. I'm like, fuck. I I can't call into work. Like I keep if I keep calling in, I'm gonna lose my job. Like I really, yeah. need, you know, it's an internship. Yeah. So as I'm driving, it's a 45 minute drive from where I'm living at the time, and I'm feeling sick, but I'm also, like I said, feeling really high, and I'm not like too high, like body high, but I'm just like poisoned essentially. 
So I'm driving and about halfway through, I'm like, should I just drink milk? Cause drink is gonna milk me vomit. Like, should I just, I, like I need to get this out of me. And as I'm driving, I throw up in my mouth. And so I had to like stop the car, pull over. I get out of the car. <laughs> And I'm th- <laughs> why, why looks like he wants to vomit right now. <laughs> no, I'm just saying I've had that happen to me more times than it should. Yeah. Where you like puke in your mouth and you like, have to hold that shit. You just have to hold it to get yeah, to I've safe never place. done that in my life. <laughs> <laughs> I have a weak ass. What's wrong with you? Oh, fuck, it's it's awful. Shit, yeah. yeah, so that I have to pull over and get out of the car and then you start throwing up onto the floor. And it was awful. I finally get myself to work. And at the time, I had a very small office that I shared. Like, I wasn't out. They didn't have enough cubicles. They were making some. So for, like, a month or two, I was sitting in a very small office. It was a little bit smaller than this room. It was maybe, like, 12 by 10. Like, it was a tiny little office. So me and this other kid used to sit in there. And we would just have the lights off just because it was next to a shop. So there'd be a giant window. There'd be a bunch of light anyway. But for the most part, it was dark room. And I just walk in and I put my head down and I proceeded just to like fall asleep for like four hours. And then he, he could tell I wasn't good, but he was cool enough that he's like, whatever, he's not feeling well or he, maybe he's hung over. And in my head, I was just like spacing out, just so sick, so sick, like a little high, but mostly sick. Dude, what were your symptoms though, man? Like, what I just, you I, well, I, I felt really like nauseous. I, like I was a little high, but not to the point where you're like, dude, I'm, I'm faded right now. I was more of like, probably like you guys eating scallops. <laughs> I just felt really uncomfortable. And re- like, if you drink too much NyQuil the next day, you're like kind of out of it. Yeah. It was like that time. Stuff. Okay. okay. Like, so you're, you're like sleepy. You're not feeling well. You're warm. You, the floor is spinning. And I only slept for about four hours the night before because it was so late. And I was also super sick from the, the, the nug that I ate. And this kid posted me on the shoulder. He goes, hey, man, like, you got that meeting you got to go to, like, in the in the conference room. So I was like, fuck. So I walk in there, and they're eating pizza. And I'm the last one to walk in. And I'm like, you guys got room for one more? They try to break the ice, and they're like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> Who is, what the, what's the up with the intern today? Yeah. What's up with the intern today? And I walk in. I, I sit in a corner, and the entire time I just devour pizza. Like, they brought in pizza for us to eat during the conference. Dude, and your lactose intolerance is fun. Dude, I devoured pizza. <laughs> I ate that thing. Like, they said, hey, we're going to take this out in five minutes. As if minutes. his stomach didn't feel worse. Right? <laughs> <laughs> He's like, like, things are bad. Let me quick make it worse. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, I don't even think I packed a lunch that day. Just because I was so messed up in the morning. So I ended up just, yeah, having to... I ate pizza the entire time, and I just kept like reaching over and reaching over and reaching over. Dude, I gotta eat whatever you ate. Jesus. Dude, I was I was fucked up, <laughs> and I ate the whole pizza. I go back to our little conference room, and the guy across from me is like, "Hey, man, are, like, are you okay? Like, do you need to go home?" I was like, "No, I'm just tired. Like, I didn't get enough sleep last night." Cause I don't want to say to him like, "Hey." I wanted to get high last night, but I didn't have a bowl or a wrapping paper. Or a paper. <laughs> so what I did was... So what I did was I just ate it raw. <laughs> and that was probably the worst I've ever felt. <laughs> like, sickness-wise. I've, you know, I've been sick before, but that was... That was bad up until that point of just like, what did I do? Like, there was no reason to do that. Yeah. Absolutely not. But I was like, I don't want to get, you know, I wanna get a, little, a little faded. That's so interesting that all this shit happened to you over eating it, like... Was it a reaction to something else? Or? Well, because I've never heard of anybody getting a reaction when they eat weed. It's always just like, oh, I ate it and I feel nothing. Dude, it was like, <laughs> did you eat like a whole? It was a gram and a half or something. It was. It was like the size of like half my thumb. Like a blunt's worth. It was enough to probably roll a joint. And so I grabbed that thing. What'd you do? Like put it under your tongue or something? Not like, put it under my tongue. Dude, I had to chew it. I needed like a glass of water. That is so gross. I, this wasn't like... You're like I, chewing tobacco. This wasn't like I had a joint rolled up and then I needed a... I just ate. No. It yeah. was like I had to chew it. It was a process to put it down. <laughs> now you know how Luis was when he was in high salad. school. Yeah. Yeah, it was... I had to get the job done. Since we went on that topic, have you guys ever smoked or ate anything well you just kind of answer that but what about you george like, like what the night before where you feel it a lot the day after never like you that ever ingested any substance like that no not no. where i felt the day after 
No, I kind of related to you. I guess alcohol would be the worst. But. Yeah. Yeah, that one that was pretty normal. Well, yeah, but that's normal. Yeah, that's, that's, yeah, that's, that's more normal. like the, the side effects. Yeah. Yeah. Right, yeah, some yeah, bad ones ever, before. Yeah. If you ever do enough of the, the Mary Jane yeah, the next the, day, you're I, little, I was going to say, the when, I was, night. when I was a freshman <laughs> and I was just getting into weed and stuff, I smoked, um, I just smoked some weed with a, a few, like, gangster buddies that, like, I had no business hanging out with, at, with my friend. Uh, who was this kid from the same trailer park and we were up, we grew up together we smoked weed together and whatnot and there's a few different like funny little stories in there one the my funny trailer park friend um, called one of the gangster quote unquote kids whatever Majin Buu do you guys know who that is yeah Majin Buu you're talking someone who's watching Dragon Ball Super yeah. he's like he, we're all two hours into the smoke session right yeah. everyone's deep like there's like three or four of them and there's only two of us and we're hanging out in his room and they're all he's hosting them and he's just like dude anybody ever tell you you look like majin boo and he's like a chubbier kid <laughs> <laughs> so this is like, before the kid transformation nah dog what the fuck you mean dog <laughs> so he's sitting there trying to fucking fight my friend <laughs> because he did that shit to him. So this this all happens. Um the we're gonna press skip on that. They didn't get in a fight. Yeah. We ju- everybody just leaves kinda tense and, and we're at home and everybody goes home and suddenly it's the next day and we had smoked their weed, whatever. And I told my friend, dude, you a feel little funny? More potent. Yeah, you feel funny, that man? Like potent. the next day. I'm like, you still feel that? Like, cause I do, man. I feel like I've never felt this before. Like I feel like, like I the I'm next still day. The next day, yeah. I went to like the most lowly kid I knew in my social circle. I was like, "Who the fuck has tried the most drugs in my social circle?" <laughs> I was like, "Hey, yo, like, you know, X Y name." Hey, can I ask you? Uh, can, can I, I ask you a question? Like, you ever try some shit that like makes you feel high the next day? He's like, "Nah, dude, you must have had some late shit." I was like. So it was at that point where, you know, it makes you kind of panic a little bit. Yeah, but yeah. So feel like your heart beat through yeah, your eyes. It, it, yeah, exactly. It sends your heart out of your chest. You know? Yeah. The time I felt it really hard the fine? next day. I was fine. But it literally took me till like 3 p.m. that day to yeah, come down where it's whatever like, was coming. Yeah, just because you don't, like, yeah, no, that's that's pretty common, actually. Yeah. Jeez. The time that I had it happen to me, like, hardcore one time was uh, I went to prom. And I was a little sick at the time. So I did what every high schooler does, which is you get really, really high the night before and you drink a bunch of NyQuil. So the night before I was faded. I mean, I was... <laughs> I didn't know this was, I was a trend. I was, did you do this? I was Drake certified lover boy I didn't faded. smoke weed until I was like a, a freshman in college. Dude, I was, I was gone. And dude, I, I smoked a joint probably all by myself, drank some bunch of NyQuil. And I was like, dude, I'm gonna sleep like a baby. I'm gonna wake up in the morning to feel fine feel like a champ and i woke up the next day like someone had mugged me in the middle of this night <laughs> like i woke up the next day feeling worse than the night before i was so tense and i couldn't like open my eyes all the way and it was probably the sickness i didn't let my body digest all the night well i was probably still a little high and i was all nervous because prom sipping on lean <laughs> feeling like my hero wheezy f baby you know right and then the girl that i was at prom with was like hey like you seem like i don't, I don't want to say this but like do you want to be here like what's wrong and i was just like yeah i'm just really sick i'm just uh i don't know how to tell you but i'm just really sick <laughs> that's all i could say to her i'm like way to ruin this girl's prom <laughs> Ooh, was it junior or senior i yeah. was a junior but yeah i was just like the entire time I just wasn't there like I was just I would look at the ground and just space out and think about like time and space and <laughs> like I was gone <laughs> and this poor girl's trying to have the night of her life and I'm like yeah I'm... <laughs> you were feeling like that Terrence McKenna video where every molecule in your body is a vibrating atom and this and that <laughs> And I, I could was... really feel the Skrillex that night. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't even tell you what we. Ate. Oh, you know what? That night too. Let's let's uh let's end on this. Uh, going back to a restaurant, we went to a hibachi restaurant, and was that that night? That was that night. Oh, we went man. to a hibachi restaurant, 
and <laughs> by the way i'm with other people who i don't know but i'm the only person i know there's probably five couples let's go with five couples and i only know one other one because the girl i know from like when we were younger like she's related to one of my cousins so that's kind of how the girl and i started dating through her and we're having hibachi dinner we're eating and i'm like i'll get a lemonade right and she's like i'll get water blah 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 she gets the shrimp i get the chicken we're eating and in the back of my mind i'm like i only have 45 dollars in my bank account <laughs> i had to rent out a tux for, <laughs> for prom i only have 45 dollars the bill comes out at the end of dinner 46 72 so i'm like fuck i and you know what i did what any young man would do i gave my card and now now knowing that so i so know you should have just said hey put 40 put 45 on this card we're 44 on this card so at least some of it's paid for i should have said that or what i always think to this day i should have not gotten lemonade <laughs> <laughs> lemonade was 250 and that's what pushed me over and so the server hands the other couple of their cards like here you go like i know you guys have to get going and they're like yeah you know thank you so much blah 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 and she hands them all out. She comes to me and she goes, hey, there was there was an issue with the credit card. Do you want me to run another one? And then, and you know, I'm like super sick. I'm dizzy. I don't feel well. And my car just didn't go through. Well, that woke him up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, like perfect combination. And I'm like, oh, uh, yeah, let me see. See what? I had two cards in my wallet, my high school ID to get free lunch, and then my debit card. Like, I had no other payment back then. So then, uh, let me just try oh, this, yeah, try my, this my one. Cards. Yeah, let me, let me check. Oh, the Amex didn't work? Let me see the chase. Let me see the chase. Oh, my uh, orange PNC bank account didn't work. And I, the, my girlfriend's, uh, at the time, friend was like, hey, what's going on? Like, did she say something to you? And I'm like, Hey, real quick can you pay for today and I will pay you back in a week when I see you and she goes okay so she just gives her card I'm like hey you know if you could run this one we gotta get going she runs her card and I'm like just like so embarrassed I don't want to talk I don't want to say anything and she's like yeah sure runs the card and I, I'm like just tip her whatever like I'm sorry like I, you know, we just gotta get going we gotta get back to the, the dance hall and whatever and she's like okay and I had just walk out with my tail between my legs. And now I got to go pretend to be happy for like five hours. In the back of my head, I was like, I should have. Because that whole day was rough for you, huh? But at least she no. was your girlfriend. You know, she was wasn't just like rough some, day. Yeah. some yeah. random girl that yeah. you're taking a prom. Yeah, she wasn't going to pay. She, You know, like, she she didn't bring her wallet. Absolutely no offense to her, but like, that's just, she expected me to pay. Yeah. <laughs> Which is what I said. <laughs> That's, I told her I was going to. I don't know why she expected I, I that. I picked up an extra shift on Thursday. The girls they used to have. So on that, we'll uh, we'll close this episode. Uh, thank you so much for listening, and we'll see you next week, uh, boys. Any any final words? Any final words, Jamie? Yeah. Check. Take a take a small bite of scallop, and then and then before see how you, you eat fe- seven. See how you feel, yeah. and, then, and before you eat True. a few. Good Maybe advice. the same philosophy could take place with any of the nut butters, just in case you're... True. And the same philosophy could go for any uh, raw marijuana. Yes. Just, just take a small bite if you exactly. feel it. Exactly. Re- re- really, this philosophy goes with anything, you know? And oral. Yeah. While and we're at oral. it. Yeah. While we're at it, you never know. And oral, that's true. So, uh, thanks so much for listening, and we'll see you next week. See you guys next week.